Reports have it that South Africa is teetering on the brink of its most severe power cuts yet. People have been hit with stage six load shedding this past weekend, with ESCOM admitting it had as many as 45 breakdowns in a week. This is just two months after the government announced emergency measures to try to end intermittent outages. The power utility says many of its older stations are experiencing trips and has had to supplement power supply by using large quantities of diesel, spending 7.7 .7 billion rand, that's around $435 million in five months. This is way over its diesel budget for the whole year. The situation is dire, prompting President Cyril Ramaphosa to cut short an overseas trip to return and find a way to respond to the crisis that has been the worst for scheduled power cuts by the monopoly utility ESCOM. And so joining me now is an independent economic energy and policy analyst, Shepo Kadima, who will be talking about um, this ESCOM and power generation crisis. You're welcome. Thank you very much and greetings to the viewers of uh, Central News or New Central TV. Now, ESCOM has been experiencing a high level of trips and breakages at its units, four to five breakdowns in a week. Uh, there is the speculation that these issues are as a result of in-house sabotage, though ESCOM denies that. So do you think there are some inside dealings working at variance or there is some sort of problem in terms of leadership at ESCOM? Yeah, look, the problems are certainly, I wouldn't reduce them to sabotage, but I would say that they are choreographed to actually uh, precipitate what we are currently seeing, rolling blackouts in the country, which I hasten to add, have been really financially ruinous to ESCOM and economically catastrophic to the country. But that is really reduced to none other than the door of... Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, the Minister of Public Enterprise, Pravin Godan, and of course the board of ESCOM, as well as the CEO of ESCOM, who also have evidently showed and demonstrated that they are grossly incompetent, they are wrong people for the positions, hence they have made fundamentally erroneous decisions which have led the country to be in this crisis we find ourselves in. Now, ESCOM says it expended about 7.7 .7 billion rand on diesel in five months, a budget that should span the whole year. And now they'll have to raise about 500 million rand in order to purchase diesel. Now, would you say that um, ESCOM is just being over-reliant on diesel rather than exploiting coal? Or would you say that coal is not enough as an alternative source of energy? Okay, in the first instance, South Africa, if we were to double our current coal consumption, we would have at least 120 years of coal reserves that can be used. Meaning, if we, our coal production was to go up to 500 million tons a year from the uh, figure of approximately 250 million tons at the moment, which includes export, which includes coal to liquids, as well as uh, power generation uh, for coal. So, Therefore, we don't have a problem of coal reserves. Secondly, South Africa has got well over 44,000 megawatts of installed capacity of coal-fired baseload power stations. The demand in the country right now has gone down and continues to go down. We are currently having a maximum demand of no more than 32,000 megawatts. But the total installed capacity in the country, the nameplate, is well over 56,000 megawatts. So we should not be having rolling blackouts as we do. So the rolling blackouts that the country is currently enduring are resultant from corruption, which unfortunately has taken hold not only within ESCOM as a utility, but within government as well, because they have made decisions such as the use of diesel, which no country on this planet can ever use diesel as a base load supply of electricity because in any event, it has never been designed to do so. And secondly, we've seen the country and uh, the politicians and the current government making fundamentally erroneous decisions of adding independent power producers who produce uh, intermittent energy, which is not reliable, from solar and wind. And that has actually exacerbated 
the dire situation we see, and also management of ESCOM have inexplicably shut down 15,000 megawatts of base load energy from coal, and hence the country is uh, gripped by this load shedding crisis. And all of that has been simply to uh, increase the tariffs of electricity in order to pay over the monies collected from electricity sales, sales which are declining to uh, the diesel suppliers, to the independent power producers who produce totally redundant energy and everything else has nothing to do with making ESCOM efficient to supply base load power reliably in the least cost manner in an environmentally friendly way. Uh, while you berate the um, government's intervention, should we still expect that the National Treasury will probably step in to inject additional funds to purchase uh, more diesel uh, to power the facility? National Treasury will step in not only in terms of providing the funds for diesel, as I say, diesel which should not ever have been required in any event because we demonstrated this in 2015 that you could uh, stop the use of diesel in power generation. But National Treasury will step in as it has done in the last four years. Every single year, we have seen National Treasury having to provide a lifeboat, a, a, a bailout to ESCOM, and this year is going to be no different. In fact, the audited financial statements of ESCOM are delayed from being released. And one of the reasons for that delay is because National Treasury has to step in in order for ESCOM to remain a going concern. Because if the audited financial statements were to be released prior to the bailout from National Treasury being released, then ESCOM will not be a going concern. And that will trigger in an avalanche of uh, various loans that the state has been called becoming due and payable because the covenants that National Treasury has entered, entered into with the lenders has been that none of the state-owned companies are supposed to default on the debt instruments or the bonds that uh, they hold with uh, various uh, lenders internationally and domestically. So we are going to see National Treasury continuing with bailout as I say, which has been the case in the last four years. And going forward, as the bailout increases, that uh, the amount of the bailout increases, we are going to see a ESCOM that is becoming even more vulnerable. But the biggest risk that the country faces now is that of a collapse, a total collapse of the transmission grid, which in turn will mean that economically, this country will be set back at least 20 to 30 years because a total uh, collapse of the national grid, the transmission grid, it will mean that the power system will take at least 21 days or three weeks to come back online. And the devastation economically, the weight catastrophe does not even uh, explain 10% of what will happen. All right, let's talk about the Energy Advisory Committee that President Suramaposa previously set up. Has it made any recommendations? Has it presented any um, sort of um, solution in dealing with the electricity crisis? And has that benefited South Africans in any way? The advisory committees that the president has put in place, even when he was uh, deputy president of the country and he was uh, chairing the so-called war room, a war room which I hasten to add was unlawful, unlawfully uh, instituted and constituted. They cannot make any practical, uh, financially sound and technically viable recommendations on the basis that they don't have the requisite skill, experience and expertise to advise the president or to advise even the board of ESCOM in terms of uh, the correct decisions that need to be taken with regard to our power, our power system. And you, you know, the viewers, I think, across the world and specifically in Nigeria, you'll be horrified to know that there is not a single person in our cabinet who knows the difference between electricity and energy and the relationship. There's not a single person, even at ESCOM, on the board or in management, who knows the difference between a megawatt and a megawatt hour or difference between voltage and current. Hence, the decisions that they continue to make 
are in peril in the energy system. One of the key examples is just yesterday, ESCOM came out with an announcement that they are going to procure 1,000 megawatts of so-called emergency generation program or emergency generation power. That is only going to make electricity grid more vulnerable because the energy is intermittent, but okay. also that emergency power is diesel fired. So the cost of running diesel are at least 12 times more than the inherent cost of uh, generating power All right. from home. All right, thank you so much, uh, Shepo Kadima, for joining us on Business Edge. We'll keep up with the conversation as regards ESCOM and see what the response of the government will be. Thank you so much for being part of it. Great pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, ESCOM's deteriorating finances come as the power utility is trying to respond to an intensified period of power cuts. And even citizens are concerned about why the country continues to experience load shedding in spite of President Ramaphosa's emergency energy plan. Uh, the severe power cuts have already seen the manufacturing, agriculture, mining and domestic trade sectors perform poorly, costing the economy billions of rand in lost activity. So definitely there's a lot that needs to be done to tackle that situation. We'll quickly go on a break now and when we return we'll be wrapping up with NC4 to watch. And as we wrap things up, let's take a look at a few stories that we're tracking at this time. We start in East Africa, where Kenya paid back its creditors with 63.5% of the taxes it collected in the first two months of the current fiscal year, indicating a high risk of debt crisis. According to the most recent Treasury figures, debt servicing expenses came to around 177.95 billion Kenyan shillings in July and August, despite record-breaking tax receipts of 280.23 billion Kenyan shillings. The newly refreshed South African Airways is under the scrutiny of the Air Services Licensing Council, which says that the embattled airline's relaunch project may be a breach of the Air Services Licensing Act. SAA confirmed receipt of a letter from the council in August 2022 seeking information from the airline so it could ascertain its compliance and or non-compliance with the act. Trade between Egypt and the European Union surged 24.5% year-on-year in 2021. Egypt's trade with the EU reached around $29.6 billion last year, up from around $23.8 billion in 2020. The EU is the second biggest market globally for Egyptian exports. And finally, we wrap things up in West Africa, where the Nigerian government said there are plans to increase the 30,000 Naira minimum wage in light of inflation. Minister of Labor and Employment Dr. Chris Ingige said that the adjustments had become important to reflect what was happening globally. And that's the business we have for you today. Tomorrow is another day for us to put African business, economies, and of course finance front and center. So do make it a date, 11 a.m. West African time right here on New Central. You can of course follow us on our social media timelines at New Central TV, download our mobile app, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and watch us on DSTV channel 422, Star Time channel 274, and other platforms we are available. I'm Tolu Lakwe, Adila Rubalumu. Have a great day.